Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc. I'm here at the Haas School of Business uh, today with Amy Gershkoff, who is the Chief Data Officer at Zynga. Welcome, Amy. Thank you so much for having me. So, Amy, you've been uh, in the data business for a long time, right? Starting off with the Obama campaign and then going into consulting and then working at eBay and now at, at Zynga. So you've seen a lot. And um, I think uh, you, you've said that um, although every company wants to be a data-driven company and every organization wants to make data-driven decisions, uh, they don't always have a roadmap uh, to get them where they want to go. And oftentimes they, they come in and they say, give me a dashboard. And you have to tell them that that's not really the way to approach this problem. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think for many companies today, uh, there's a lot of buzz around big data. And so a lot of companies uh, say to themselves, I need to collect as much data as possible. And there's so many great technologies out there now that make it easy to do that. Uh, but the truth is that for most companies, most organizations, they already have internally uh, more data than they are possibly uh, utilizing today or could ever possibly utilize. Uh, and for many organizations, the challenge is how to take that data and drive really good business insights out of that data. And so often um, when I was in consulting, um, I would have clients that would say, uh, we'd like a dashboard to track all of our key metrics. Uh, and I say, okay, um, we'll get there, but first, Let's start with taking all the data you have in-house and figuring out how to connect that data, um, how to take insights from one data set and connect those to insights that we're seeing from other data sets in other parts of the company. And when you create that right foundational data layer, uh, then the dashboards that help visualize that data become much more impactful across the whole organization. So I, I can understand why maybe a legacy company would have um, kind of data in a, in a very disorganized format and it's collected for kind of random reasons or conflicting reasons. But one would think that kind of newer companies that have emerged uh, since the, the era of big data it would have kind of more coherence to the way in which they, they organize their data. Are you, are you seeing kind of improvements when you look at kind of the newer, fast-growing companies? I think really there's, there's quite a lot of variety um, as you look at the marketplace. And for a lot of companies, you know, today, um, data storage is relatively inexpensive uh, for most companies, and there's an ability in a lot of organizations to move quickly uh, by having each department have their own data set, uh, their own database, their own cloud storage. Um, but when you let each part of the company um, be captain of their own data strategy, it can create challenges for the organization overall to connect those dots and draw insights across the business. Uh, because the truth is, the marketing department's data about advertising campaigns, uh, marketing campaigns, uh, PR uh, and communications uh, internally and externally, uh, you want all of that data to be connected to data about how much your customers are spending, and where they're spending it, and what verticals, and uh, for uh, at what point in time and for how long. Uh, and you want that data connected to other data about your customers. Are they interacting with you on social media? Um, are, they, um, are they influencers online? Are they talking about your brand uh, in, on their blog or on Twitter? Uh, all of that data is very important and often in organizations zest uh, to move quickly, um, they miss the very critical need to connect the dots between all of those data sets. Now, uh, you, you worked with the Obama campaign and uh, the very successful Obama campaign in, in 2012, which is really held up as the, the benchmark for uh, political media campaigns around the world. And, and one of the reasons why it's so famous is that um, the campaign did such a good job of uh, segmentation, segmenting the voters. Um, you've seen a lot of bad segmentation in, in your career. What, what are, what's one or two of the, the most egregious mistakes that you can make when you're trying to segment your customers? Well, that's a great question. And I think one of the challenges for whether it's the Obama campaign or any company uh, is to really target their efforts in, in advertising especially uh, to where they'll have the most impact. Uh, so if you take the case of the Obama campaign, uh, there's a certain number of people uh, who are registered to vote. And among those, uh, there's some uh, really fervent Democrats and fervent Republicans who've already made up their mind in the election. Um, and so the target audience are the people who are registered to vote, uh, but they haven't yet made up their mind about who to vote for that we'd like to persuade. Um, so if that's your target segment, anytime you're spending communicating with someone outside the target segment trying to persuade 
anyone else to, to, uh, on their vote is going to be time that's wasted. Uh, so if I'm talking to uh, a Democratic, uh, someone who works on the Obama campaign or a fervent Democrat, and I'm trying to persuade them to vote for Obama, that's a dollar wasted. But it's also a dollar wasted if I'm uh, putting an ad in front of a Mitt Romney staffer uh, because that, their mind is also made up. And so really being crisp about who you're trying to reach and what the right message is for reaching them and being targeted is critical to being efficient with media bias. And that's important for companies today as well. Um, There's not unlimited money, of course. In fact, uh, many companies have very tight marketing budgets and they need to spend every dollar as efficiently and effectively as possible. And part of that is being very crisp and precise with exactly who their target audience is and targeting the advertising just to those individuals. So uh, the more efficient and effective um, advertising campaigns really comes from narrowly defining the target segment uh, in a way that is identifiable and as a way that is actionable for the company as well. Great. Now, uh, one of the things that the Obama campaign was known for was its uh, agility and its ability to to respond quickly to uh, the changing environment. Um, To what could you attribute that uh, agility in the campaign and the way it was organized? Uh, Well, politics is always a very uh, fast-moving industry, Um, and uh, the news cycles are are very uh, quick, and it's always important to be um, in front of whatever the right messaging is that you'd like to get um, to to the voters. So one of the things that helped the Obama campaign react so quickly was being set up organizationally in a way that enabled fast responses. Uh, So all of the senior staff, for example, uh, met every day. And that enabled us to respond very quickly to anything that might come up in the campaign, whether it's an attack ad from our opponent, a press release someone else released, a decision about whether or not to put more money or less money into a particular state or demographic group. All of those decisions could be made easily and quickly on a daily basis. Uh, Where I've seen many companies really struggle is often, especially in a world where many companies are global, uh, not, even, not only are the key decision makers often not in the room together, uh, many of them are not even awake at the same time uh, due to time zone differences. And it can create a big challenge for truly global companies with key decision makers around the world uh, to be able to make decisions in a quick and nimble fashion if not everyone is in the room together. And so um, developing some operating rhythms that enable fast, real-time decision making, even in that global environment, I think is becoming increasingly important for companies today. Amy, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Mm